What are NFTs to start off with? Is this the future of the art market and the number one art investment that you can buy today? Or is this just another bubble that will leave a lot of wallets empty? There are a lot of questions, so let's dive in right away. So first of all, what are NFTs? NFTs are nothing more than digital non-fungible tokens recorded on the blockchain that represent the ownership of a particular asset, in this case a digital artwork. In other words, it serves as a proof that you are the owner of the artwork. Non-fungible means that each token is unique, unlike, for example, euros or dollars, which are fungible, meaning they are interchangeable. An exact replica of one dollar is worth one dollar because, well, it's the same thing. An exact replica of a non-fungible token is worth nothing because it's not the same thing. You would, for example, not be satisfied with a replica, an exact replica of Picasso. If you could for the same price get the real deal, that is because a Picasso is non-fungible. Now, an important thing here for you to understand is that all these transactions are recorded on the blockchain, which is a decentralized digital ledger that records all transactions. In practical terms, this means that your artwork that you purchased cannot be stolen anymore or lost. And because it's a digital artwork, you also solve the problem of conservation because in theory, you could conserve these artworks on the blockchain for infinity which generally speaking is a very long time. So what about the future of the art market? Is this a real deal? And will you be able to make a lot of money from NFTs in the future? Well, first of all, all crypto art in the form of NFTs are heavily rising in price and is likely to rise even more for at least the near future since major institutions like Christie's will solidify its value by putting it on auction. This will result in a spike in prices since a portion of the collectors will feel safe enough to invest in crypto art for the first time, which will result in somewhat of a spike for sure. But are the benefits of NFTs and crypto art enough to secure a long-term growth? Or is this something that will only last a couple of months? Well, let's talk about some of the benefits to see how advantageous these benefits really are. The first benefit that we will be talking about is the fact that you can conserve these non-fungible tokens for eternity. Which is very interesting because here's the thing with artworks, with real artworks, with paintings, they will deteriorate over time. And since the condition of the object has an impact on the price of that object in almost every other thing in the world, like for example cars or Pokemon cards, you would think that this is also true for artworks. And so this benefit could potentially solve that problem. And there's definitely something true about it. The condition of an artwork has a positive or negative impact on the price of that artwork, but not entirely. Because when it comes to art, the rules are slightly different. And so how much of its value really depends on the condition of an artwork? Well, if we look at the price of the most famous paintings over time, we see that the more they deteriorate and get restorated, the more valuable they actually become. And so even though the deterioration should have a negative impact on the value, it's interesting to see that the impact is often only a fraction of the value of the artwork. And so solving this conservation problem might not be as big of a benefit as crypto people think. Or does it? Is there something more that we are not seeing? Well, it turns out that the real benefit lies more in the practical part of investing in art because storing an artwork and restorating an artwork is extremely expensive. You need to have special chambers that are fireproof and waterproof chambers with the right humidity and temperature and all sorts of complex conservation things. And when it comes to restorating your investment, you need highly specialized people to do the restoration, which costs a lot. Otherwise, you get something like this or this. Now, the point here is that the high maintenance cost that comes with conserving traditional art is one of the big downsides of investing in traditional art. And you don't have those maintenance costs with NFTs. And so that's why it might be more interesting to invest in NFTs than investing in traditional art. Let's talk about the second major benefit of NFTs. The fact that non-fungible tokens cannot be stolen because they are recorded on the blockchain. Now, obviously, this is a good thing. But believe it or not, it also has some downsides because when we look at the most famous artworks in the world, we see that some of them were stolen and that the fact that they were stolen had a massive positive impact on the price of those artworks. I'm thinking of the Mona Lisa, for example. 
The Mona Lisa is so famous that 80% of the visitors in the Louvre come for the Mona Lisa only, according to the director of the Louvre Museum. And 80% equals to about 8 million visitors a year. And so, needless to say, something that brings you 8 million visitors a year for decades on end and is also the most famous painting in the world, is worth a couple of billion dollars. Now, if we look at the fame of the Mona Lisa, we see something extremely interesting happening. The Mona Lisa was worthless and completely unknown from 1507 when Leonardo painted it up until 1860 when art critics started noticing her. But even then, she was only known among art insiders. And in 1911, on the 21st of August, she got stolen and everything changed. Suddenly every journalist in every magazine and newspaper started writing about her. People came to the Louvre in large packs to see an empty spot on the wall where the Mona Lisa used to hang. Her absence became more famous than her presence. This attention didn't just go away after a couple of days, no. It remained for several years until she was found and brought back to the museum in 1914. And after she returned, she wasn't just art anymore. She became more than that. She became a story. She became part of history. And it's widely accepted among art historians that a large portion of the fame around Mona Lisa comes from the fact that she was stolen from all the publicity around it. Now, I'm not saying that art cannot be valuable if it cannot be stolen and that therefore NFTs will not be valuable. Nor am I suggesting that you should make sure that your art gets stolen to increase the prices. Both of those claims would be fairly stupid. But what I am saying is that there's something mysterious about a stolen masterpiece that NFTs or crypto art will likely never have. And so how can we explain what's happening with NFTs if the benefits are not necessarily the driver of its success? Why did all these NFT artworks go from being worth a couple of dollars to being worth tens of thousands of dollars in one year? There was even an NFT artwork called 2020 Every Days made by Winkleman that sold for $3.5 million just a month ago. And so what's happening here? Well, first of all, there are a massive amount of influencers who want to hop in on the trend. And so what they do is they make their own crypto art in the form of NFTs and then sell that to their audience. And so by doing that, they obviously are, are marketing the NFT market as a whole and pushing those prices up. Each of these influencers have millions of followers and so as a result tens if not hundreds of millions of people are suddenly becoming aware of the NFT market in a very short period of time and on top of that you also have business influencers like Gary Vaynerchuk who is recommending his audience to massively buy NFTs. And so as a result of all of this, you see these huge price jumps. But with all this hype, we should ask ourselves two things. If these prices are reflecting the value accurately, or if this is all one big bubble, and should you think about investing in these things yourself or should you stay away from them for now? Well, in order to answer this, let's first compare NFTs to other similar types of investments like art or Pokemon cards. If we look at art or Pokemon cards or any item that has a lot of value, we see that there is a history behind those investments. A history that gradually goes up over time for artworks. It took sometimes hundreds of years to see million dollar price points. And so this is exactly why you know that the price of Picasso is not going to go down. It's because of that established value because it has been going up for over a century. And the same goes for Pokemon cards. The prices of Pokemon cards have been gradually going up for the last 20 years, meaning 20 years of global cultural activity. And in those 20 years of the Pokemon rush, the hype around Pokemon at any given moment was always bigger than the hype around NFTs at this moment. And so the activity we see around NFTs is very strange. Two months ago, nobody wanted NFTs and nobody even heard of it. And now suddenly everybody wants one. Now, to be honest, this sounds a lot and smells a lot like FOMO. This smells a lot like people who are afraid to miss out on a huge opportunity and then just buy whatever NFT they come across first. The thing with other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, for example, is that it went from $5 to $50,000, but it took years for that to happen. Pokemon went from $5 to $50,000, but it took 20 years for that to happen. And most cards are still not valuable. 
Picasso went from five dollars to fifty million dollars but it took a century for that to happen and that's essential in any type of healthy investment it should take a long time so that there's a recognizable established value in your investments but these nfts went from five dollars to thirty thousand dollars in a couple of weeks a couple of months max and something that takes a price jump that big that fast is always at least partially a bubble and so what will happen with nfts is it indeed the future of the art market or are crypto artworks and nfts bad investments well i personally believe that there's definitely a future for nfts in the art market and it's most definitely possible that nfts or that crypto marketplaces will replace the middleman in the art world and therefore become the future of that market but at this moment nfts are predominantly being sold and not yet being resold and so we will have to wait for the secondary mark to hit so that we can see if NFTs will hold their value because it's within the secondary market that prices will be validated. And so before that market hits, before that starts to happening, every opinion is kind of just speculation, including this video. Now, in order to make this video complete, there's one more thing that we have to talk about, and that is how to invest in art. Because investing in traditional art is the same and will be the same as investing in FNTs, in NFTs. And so it's only logic that we learn from those traditional art investment strategies from the past century so that we can make the right decisions when it comes to NF when it comes to nfts i cannot talk anymore we should be talking about why art increases in value what to look for in art to make sure you're buying the right investment and how to spot art trends before they're blowing up but that would be another 15 minutes and frankly a completely different video so i'm very sorry but we're not going to do that predominantly because I already did. It's called Three Tips for Collecting Art, Art Investments with Three Skatels. And yes, Three Skatels is my name. It's an older video from the time that I still thought that putting my name in the title was a good idea. And it's also an older video, meaning that my communication skills are very bad and, and I'm kind of awkward on camera and all of that stuff. But that doesn't take away that the value found in that video could potentially make you tens of thousands of dollars in the NFT market for sure. That said, for our business related stuff, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you around. Ciao, ciao.